is really interesting. Want to learn how to make one? Stick around. Hi everyone, it's Dr. D. Welcome to Neighborhood Science. Today, we're going to be talking about polymers. Now, I know polymer sounds like a really fancy word, but all a polymer is, is a super long, super, super long chemical chain made up of individual units called monomers. So let's pretend this paper clip is a monomer. When you hook all the monomers together, you get what's called a polymer, because poly means many. Now, you would be surprised of how many things are actually made out of polymers. There are two types, natural and synthetic. Natural polymers are things that are made from proteins, such as fur, nails, um, horns, and cartilage. And then we also have cellulose, which is another type of polymer. And those are gonna be things like feathers. But what we're gonna be dealing with today are synthetic polymers. Now you might be wondering, Dr. D, what does synthetic mean? Synthetic means it's made in the factory, it's man-made. And one of the biggest man-made polymers are plastics. Plastics are awesome because they're rigid, which means really stiff, or they're flexible, which means they're very moldable. But plastics also take up a lot of space in landfills. And what makes them so detrimental to the environment is the fact that they do not break down fast. So the best thing that we can do to help save our planet is to recycle. So please make sure that you recycle all of your plastics and help save the planet. Now, let's get back to polymers. Plastic is a polymer. And this is a trick that you can show your friends. So you take a plastic bag filled with water and believe it or not, Dr. D is gonna take a very sharp pencil and she's gonna pierce it through the, the bag of water. But what do you think is gonna happen? You think that all the water is gonna explode out of the bag and pour all over the place? Well, let's find out. Here we go. Uh-oh, here it is. Ah, look at that. Nothing. The water is still in the bag. So let's try it with a second pencil and see if that makes a difference. Still, no leaking. So you might be wondering, Dr. D, how is that possible? How can you poke a hole in a plastic bag and nothing leaks all over? Well, you have to remember what I told you about polymers. Polymers are super long chains. So when the pencil breaks through the plastic, it causes the chain in the polymer to wrap around the opening where the hole was and tightly wrap around the pencil and it seals it so no water leaks. That's the secret. As I told you before, one of the natural polymers is rubber, right? Rubber is what makes balls bounce. Now, we have different types of balls. You might notice that some balls bounce a lot. Some balls bounce a little bit, and some balls don't bounce at all. When the hacky sack drops and hits the ground or the tabletop, it doesn't bounce. All other balls will bounce. So let me explain to you what is happening. When a ball bounces like a basketball, when it hits the ground, it takes energy. That energy when it hits the ground is converted to spring energy, and that's what makes the ball spring back up, and that's why it bounces. But with a hacky sack, that doesn't happen. There is no spring energy. Why, you might ask? Well, it has everything to do with what is inside the hacky sack. The materials inside the hacky sack absorb heat. That's what happens. So when we drop the hacky sack and it hits the ground, the material inside the hacky sack rubs together, creates heat, instead of spring energy, and that's why it doesn't bounce. You don't believe me? The next time you're playing with your hacky sack and you're kicking it all around and all the things that you do, take the hacky sack and place it on your skin, and I bet you, you will feel that it's warm, and that's the heat that is produced inside the hacky sack. So today, we are going to make our very own bouncy balls. So let's get started.
always say, I'll get too big. I'll get too big. They say, it's too dangerous. It's too dangerous. It's too dangerous. They say, I'll get too strong. I'll get too strong. They say, it's a cult. They say, it's a cult. They say, I'll have to be They say, 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 they must not crossfit. We are crossfit. So now we're going to make our rainbow colored bouncing ball. But first, let's hear the safety tips from Millie. Thanks, Dr. D. I'm Millie. Here's my safety tips. Always work with an adult. Read and follow all directions for the activity. Read all warning labels on all materials being used. Wear eye protection. Follow safety warnings or precautions, such as wearing gloves or tying back long hair. Use all materials carefully. Follow the directions given. Be sure to clean up and dispose of materials properly when you're finished with an activity. Wash your hands well after every activity. Never eat or drink while conducting an experiment and be careful to keep all the materials away from your mouth, nose, and eyes. And last but not least, never experiment on your own. Back to you, Dr. D. Okay, so we're gonna look at the ingredients that we need in order to make our rainbow colored bouncy ball because I'm so excited. Okay, so we're gonna need glue, clear glue. You can use any kind of glue, the glow in the dark glue, the glitter glue, it doesn't matter as long as it's glue. You're gonna need cornstarch that you can get from the supermarket. You're gonna need borax, which you can also get from the supermarket, and of course, water. So one of the first things you need to do that Dr. D did ahead of time is you need to make a solution of borax and water. Okay, so that's what I have here. And then we're gonna have the different colorings of our balls and of course our sticks to measure and our cups. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna measure one tablespoon of glue and place them into each of the cups. So we're gonna do one tablespoon. And what you have to realize is that this is a polymer, okay? And a polymer contains polyvinyl alcohol. It's just another type of polymer that it has. And what we're actually doing is we are gonna make the long chains of the polymer, which are long repeating chains, like a very long, long necklace of repeating units. And we're gonna make them tangle up and that's what the borax does. It makes them tangle up, and when it tangles up, it makes the ball. And the final one. Are you excited? I can't wait to see how it's gonna come out. They always come out differently every time. So then what we're going to do next is we're going to add a half a tablespoon of cornstarch. This helps with the bonding and with the bounce. So we're gonna do a half a tablespoon Then after you do this, we're gonna put in four drops of coloring. So I'm gonna start with green, and I'm gonna do one, two, three, four. I'm gonna show off my counting skills in other languages. So I'm gonna do four drops again. This time I'm gonna do Spanish. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. And then I'm gonna do four drops again of the yellow in Dutch. Ein, twee, three, vier. And that's all the languages Dr. Dahan knows, so now I'm gonna go back to English. One, two, three, four. Once you do that, now you have to mix it all around until you get a smooth color. So 
that's what I'm doing now. So we want to keep mixing it until it looks nice and smooth. Okay, that looks good. Try to get as much of the cornstarch as you can. And I'm gonna do the same thing with each of the other three colors. And you're just gonna keep mixing it until it gets creamy. Once you have it all mixed, we have to dip it in the borax solution. And well, like I said, what the borax solution is gonna do, it's gonna cause, cause this long polymer to knot up. And that's what we needed to do. We needed to knot up because that's what's gonna make the ball. So I'm gonna take it. And you don't have to get all of it in, but as much as you possibly can. And you dip it in the borax solution and you mix it around. See what happens? It started knotting up. That long polymer chain is now all tangled up. It's like if your mom has a long necklace at home and if she puts it in the drawer and you try to take it out, it gets all tangled. It's the same kind of thing. And then you just want to mix it around pretty good in there. Ah, see how fast it happens? The reaction is super fast. Super, super fast. Okay, that's the blue. Now we're gonna do the same with the yellow. On for the red. There's the green. So now that we have all of our colors, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to gently mix them together and then we're gonna roll it into the ball. I'm gonna first knead them together. You're still gonna get some coloring coming out, but that's okay. And if you want to kind of avoid this, you can actually wait a little longer or you can dip it in the borax a little longer to make sure because the yellow is what they call bleeding a little bit. But then you roll it. So, here's your ball. Here's your bowling ball. Now, it's not as shiny as another ball, but you can make it shiny, okay? So what you can do after you roll it and you get it how you want it to be, you can actually put it inside the spoon and then if you have another one, place the spoon on top or you can just keep rolling it around inside and it will get a nice shiny color. And you have made your very own Bouncy ball, very simple. It's almost like having a little planet Earth in your hands. So, do you wanna see it bounce? Let's see how the bouncy ball bounces. Here we go. Ha! And there you have it, your own bouncing ball. So, I hope you enjoyed learning about polymers today and making your very own bouncing balls. And remember, plastics are polymers too. So do your part in helping to save the planet and recycle. Happy sciencing, Dr. D.